Okay, go ahead with the intro. Hello, my name is Shannon Dallas Hall, and I am the owner of Knockout Artists Fight Club in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. I am a former world champion boxer and currently uh, the boxing coach here amongst the other coaches. So most people know you from the American Gladiators, but I feel like you've done so much more than that. Yeah. But that's what you're known for. So for me, being a boxing fan, what stands out to me is your boxing background. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, that happened on a whim when I was uh, doing the American Gladiators. Uh, they wanted me to be a celebrity judge for the first Tough Woman World Championship. And uh, with the Gladiators, we just rotate these jobs. So by chance, I got the luck of the draw. Uh, and the last moment they had said, um, oh, never mind, we got Christy Martin. She's a little bit more in the boxing world, you know, never mind, we don't need you. I'm like, wait a minute. I just got off work for like, you know, a weekend and you don't need me. I'm like, well, wait a minute, we gotta figure this out. I said, well, what is the competition? And I've always been a badass. I have yeah. always fought. I yeah. mean, I'm from Arkansas. I beat up all my boyfriends, you know, they deserved it, yeah. right? Um, so my fighting, mm -hmm. it's always been natural. Yeah. My dad was a professional wrestler. I just raised oh, horses, okay. showed horses and stuff. And just wow. from a tough background. Uh, and with the gladiators, you know, it's a combat sport, and just because my athleticism, yeah. I was successful. Uh, so you have like a background in like boxing, you've done American gladiators. Who's like the toughest person you ever fought? Like in the ring, outside the ring, who, who comes to mind? You're like, oh man, that is like one tough person. You know what? I can't say <laughs> just one. Yeah. Um, the women. The women that I have, you know, gone against, uh, even the gladiators, the one-on-one -on -one competition mm -hmm. we had in practices, I have gone against the best women athletes, I think combatants, whether it's wrestlers, sure. gladiators, boxers, and they've all been amazing. I can't think of one particular one because every one yeah. had different strengths. You know, with wrestling, um, like Jazz on the American mm -hmm. Gladiators, she was probably the strongest wrestler okay. uh, out of boxers. A girl named Mona Turnip Nelson, uh, she probably hit the hardest uh, mm -hmm. out of anyone I've known. Um, yeah. um, but just a, a collage of strong, strong women, and I'm just really thankful to still be alive. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> to still be alive. Yeah. So when you were on the American Gladiators, did you? I mean, you guys were always very professional and very good sportsmen. You know, when the contestants came on. But did you guys take some pleasure in knocking the snot out of some of those people, especially if they showed up with a, little, with a little bit of arrogance? Of course. That was our job, is yeah. to control the arrogance. Uh -huh. It couldn't be more than ours, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like, you're not a gladiator, you're a contender. Yeah. But that, once again, there was so much respect. Mm -hmm. um, that is, that's something else I'm really lucky to be part yeah. of, where there was so much professionalism, sure. so much respect. Uh, and I also did professional wrestling. I trained with the WWF for nine, one, nine wow. months. So who did you who did you train under? Did you uh, Kurt Angle uh, okay. was one of my main teachers. Uh, we were kind of under Shane McMahon's you know, thing, where we're the women's division okay. that was starting. Um, and then unfortunately, Owen Hart had his accident and mm -hmm. they cut the women's program. So that kind of, Stop yeah. that for me, and I, I took that as a retirement sign. I had been hit and beaten and sure. bruised, and from gladiators to boxing to wrestling, and to, for the wrestling, it was a lot harder than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. that I thought my head could take a rest, but the constant slamming and slamming sure. on the floor, it had honestly taken its toll on me. So when, when they took the break for that, um, I got pregnant with my son, I met his father, and I just said, okay, Mommy's had enough brain yeah. trauma, you know, yeah. so that was my exit to take a break for a while. When you, um, like, you look back, you were you were active in so many contact sports, like, mm -hmm. what's your nagging injuries? Like, do you have a back ache? Like, is, is there anyone in particular that you're just like, oh, my goodness? My neck. Okay. Um, my neck. Uh, actually, that uh, through the gladiators and box, I never received really any major injuries. My mm -hmm. knee was injured in gladiators, which, you know, we've all had knee injuries. Sure. Um, but when I first opened my gym in 2012, I had a student of mine that slammed me on the back of mine. He was about a 220 pound uh, MMA guy. Mm -hmm. I was showing him how you could tap somebody out from the bottom with a, you know, a triangle choke. Sure. And he, you know, my career was very short. It wasn't you know, to the degree of a McGregor or Berto Duran, but um, I think I boxed professional for like four years. So it was gladiators, boxing, wrestling. I think I did a lot in that amount of time, but Boxing stuck with my heart. I mean, that is the realest, 
Okay, wrestling is... Um, it's a controlled atmosphere. It's a controlled atmosphere. But the training is, still, is very hard. Don't, but I'm not, still very physical when people get hurt. Yes. Um, you know, but there is a plan for that, and you're under someone else's control, right? Uh, Gladiators was absolutely pure. Nothing was staged. We were there one on one. I fell in love with that. But the pro, sure. But you know, I can tell you right now, when I boxed in 1999, and I look at my tapes. I mean, I just started. I just put the gloves on for a year, and I won all these things. And it was that was just fighting. I was just. It wasn't really any boxing involved. But you said you loved to fight, right? Love to so fight. So you were just going off instinct. But yes. How was, your, how was your technique when you? Were I didn't fighting? even have any. This 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 was my technique. Boom. That was it, right? But in doing those competitions and winning those awards, I won the IFB heavyweight title. I did yeah. learn. I mean, in only two years of boxing, mm -hmm. I had just basic skills that were actually used under fire and competition. But since then, I've become a coach and I've been trained. I am a better boxer now. I am, it's taken me about ten years. Now I can actually move and fight like a boxer. It takes yeah. that long, so you can't undermine the sport. That's why I love it so much. I'm still learning. So what's your, what's your ratio as far as people come to your gym as far as male and female? Is it it's about half and half okay. because I'm, I'm a sure. chick and the girls come in here and yeah. they, they want to train, they want to fight, and it's mostly um, bodybuilder girls okay. that want to do some cardio. They don't necessarily want to get in the ring and be you know, a Ronda Rousey, mm -hmm. but they want to for another part of fitness. Yeah. There is no better cardio than the boxing workout. And I've been a trainer for 25 years, and um, I have a system with the bags and the timer. There is no quicker way to lose weight. Everybody's wanting you know, the food or take some steroids or take some water pills, whatever. I challenge anybody on the workout that I give you versus any of that other stuff, and it will make you lose weight just as fast. So not only is the sport in my heart, but the workout and the boxing part of it, I stand by on the fitness level. So. You know, that reaches out to the women. The guys want to, they're pissed off. They want to hit the bag for an hour and whatever. You know, everybody's got their own thing. But I love that. It's it's so diverse. Do you get a fair amount of, like, uh, teenage girls? And, like, and what are they What are they interested in? Yeah, are believe they, it or not. Um, are they interested in just self-defense, getting in shape? Or do a lot of them want to do MMA? They want to fight. They want to fight. So I've just been open for a few weeks. But I've had about half a dozen girls that want to get in here and they want to fight. They've got their gloves, they've got their wraps, and they are into it. Some former cheerleaders, and um, they want just a little bit more than that. And so I said, this will give you a better workout than cheerleader. I was a cheerleader, a national competitive cheerleader. I know I can compare this workout to any other workout, and it's the best. And so I challenged them to get in here and do that. And they like the tough stuff, and they see my pictures on the wall. Like, okay, you, you look pretty cool, so I could do that or whatever. So it does, mo and that makes, that makes me happy. That kind of fulfills a part of me. These little girls want to fight. They love the wrestling. Got the wrestling coach here from the high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're in there. And I said, just try it. They said, well, did you do it? I said, yes, I've done it all. Okay, well, since you did it, I'll do it. And they do it, and they love it. Yeah. They absolutely love it. Well, I didn't know it felt so good to slam a guy on the ground. I'm like, see? <laughs> so, so you, you, it sounds like this is almost more like a community center than like a gym. Yeah. Because you know a lot of gyms come and go. Yeah. But it seems like... This is more like a community center atmosphere yeah. where you get a little bit of everybody from the town here yeah. that wants to come in and learn something or focus on a particular thing. They're just testing. There, there's no other MMA gyms here in town. Okay. There's never been one here. Uh, I'm the, I had the only other boxing gym on the other side of town, but this is MMA. We've got the cage set up back there. Uh, I'm pulling in some uh, UFC fighters to come in and do some MMA programs for the kids. I got some black belts I'm interviewing to see who's right for us in here. So um, I have high hopes for this place. You know, it's a it's our little dojo here, and I'm going to teach the kids what what it's about to be a fighter. There's a discipline involved. It's for real. You have to respect the training. Um, now they don't just come in here and do what they want. You know, I monitor all their sparring. Mm -hmm. I monitor their training, whatever. And you know, I'm Mama Bear. People call you. Do they call you Shannon? Do they call you Dallas? Do they, I mean, like, what do you what both. do you go by? Like, what do you both. do? You have a preference, or um, I both. I mean, I, Shannon. The girls call me Shannon. The guys mostly call me Dallas for some reason. Okay. I think to them it's more like a fantasy. Yeah, you know, it's Dallas or whatever. It kind of sure. excites me still. So as long as I'm bringing that excitement, that window's not going to be open for forever. So yeah. as long as I can fill those shoes, yeah, that's that's pretty cool.
So um, what's what's what does the future hold like? Is there anything you want to do? I know you've got the gym. You want to continue like expanding programs, but yep. um, you see yourself continuing to coach and train people. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to try to make any comebacks or anything like that. My body is done. Um, just when I get in there, and I already said that I wouldn't be sparring with people or wrestling sure. with the guys, but you know, I, it's my nature to do that. Just sparring with someone a few weeks ago, I got my neck hurt again. I was just like, just this sharp pain goes down. And, but you know, I'm, I'm so, when I get challenged, I wanna go for it, right? But just that, it's just like, okay, so I'm gonna get hurt and then I can't run the business. I just, you know, I'll never completely quit. You know, I mean, something might happen. I hope it doesn't, yeah. but, but no, there's, I know what it takes to compete. To the level that I was at and the kind of fighter that I was, I had no children, no responsibilities, no worries except train and fight. That is the only way that I would ever do it. And I can't do it anymore. I've got my babies. I want to raise this school too. I want to be around it for the rest of my life. I want to be around it. And my next goal, and because I'm a boxer and I, I can never like, no matter how popular MMA gets, boxing still my heart's uh, desire. I want to still be involved with that. I would like to be the first woman coach to ever have a world champion boxer. There's never been a woman to do that. Um, Jackie Callen, that's a friend of mine. She was the, you know, they made the movie Against the Ropes about her. Um, Is that a friend of yours? Yeah, she actually gave me my IFBA women's uh, belt. Um, the IFBA actually started under Jackie Callen okay. in uh, 19, what was it, 1997. So she awarded me my first belt as Tough Woman World Champion and IFBA Women's uh, Champion. I think things changed after that and it changed hands. The rules changed. My weight division changed. So now all those fights I did with Tough Woman aren't even counted as regulated fights. Um, so it was just too premature. Um, but she's the first woman manager to ever manage a world champion. So I want to take a step further and be the first actual coach. Coaching's not easy. There's still so much to learn. Um, so that's what I want to do. So I'm, I've got my place set. And I'm going to continue to learn to do coaching and maybe shadow. I shadowed Freddie Roach when I was pregnant with my daughter in okay. 2003. He was training uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, excuse me. He was training Pacquiao okay. for I think his fight against De La Hoya. So um, that got me. I mean, just wrapping someone's hands. There's an art to that. Just wrapping a fighter's hands. There's something majestic about that to me. There's something that I mean. That's what I know my calling is. First time I ever stepped in a boxing ring something before i even thought something came over me i knew that i was supposed to be there wrapping somebody's hands i know i'm supposed to be there so i can't wait until my fighter until i'm wrapping his hands you know on espn right there for our first world yeah. title fight you've done so much and you've been in the public eye like i'm sure you get like fans who reach out to you and oh say, yes hey you know like I don't know, what's been some of the like more heartwarming, warm, heartwarming stories you've had where people have reached out and said, hey, I saw you on TV, and, or maybe you motivated me to get in shape. Maybe that happens almost there. almost every other day. Hey, we're wrapping up. We've got Hunter, who's operating the camera now. Just got done interviewing Shannon Dallas Paul. I just wanted to tell her thank you so much for doing an interview. And uh, if you're ever in New Smyrna Beach, Come by the gym and uh, any last clothing work? I just want to thank Romeo for coming to the to this day and helping promote the gym. And I want to get knocked out of this fight club on the mat. We're not about numbers here, we're about champions here. And we're going to build champions from the ground up. That's my challenge. It's easy to get 100 people in here, but it's uh, hard to get one champion out of here. So that is our goal it's quality training, and we'll be with people. Awesome. Now we can we have a muscle contest? Oh, Her muscle's shoot. bigger than mine. Oh, I've got puny little arms. They're not puny. <laughs> they work. They don't work too. <laughs> that punch hurts. All right. Okay. Hey, thank you so much. That's a wrap.